practical perspective, from a business perspective, think about the out. So what exactly are you trying to? And this is related to something Stephen Covey says and in, in Habits of Highly Effective People. Begin with the end in mind. And it's okay if the first statement that you make is a qualitative statement, but it needs to be what you really want. So in the example in the course, they say we want the model to predict how popular a video just uploaded will become in the future. Now, this isn't a precise statement. They haven't said a metric they, that we could actually measure and get a number. They haven't said, you know, we want it, we want to predict how many a views per day on average it obtains in a month period. We want to we want to look at the maximum number of views. That that comes later, where we take what we're looking at in a qualitative sense and turn it into a metric where we can actually measure. And that there's an art. But one of the things it says is make sure this captures your real goal, not an indirect. People say, well, I want a million dollars. Well, why do you want a million? Well, I, I want a nice house. No, so you don't really want a million dollars. You want a nice house. And that's important here because once you set the goal, once you get the computer involved in moving towards that goal, the computer will do an auto job. The algorithms almost always work as intended towards optimizing their objective function. But the mistake people can make in this early part is they don't identify the right goal. If a university sets a goal of, I'm going to give you a real example from, and this is something where machine learning I don't think would be appropriate. It's an example of how you have an objective. Once you set that objective, things can get out of whack. So for instance, a university might set a goal that they want an 80% graduation. But what's the drawback to this? It's really easy to achieve this. Professors can just start ending out grades. They can, you know, not kick people out for bad grades. That They can encourage professors to give people better grades. They can put in so much tutoring structure and everything that this work is essentially done for the student. This goal is, is uh, balanced against the need to maintain the integrity of the degree by making sure that students who get a degree also have the experience of solving difficult things and that they've actually learned what the classes indicate they would have. So if you just set the goal of graduation rate, that's easy to it. But you're likely to see effects that you're not intended, not intending. Um, it can, it can, so there are always going to be ways to achieve the objective that are undesirable. And when you're uh, designing your objective function, this is something to take into account. So there's an example given by Andrew Ng in his course on deep learning. And he talks about exactly this issue that arises in industry. And the example is you're training an app that you want to recognize pictures of cats. So you're going to have a metric of how you recognize that your app being successful. You're going to have an objective you're trying to achieve. And I'm curious if you can, I'm going to pause for a moment. I'm curious if you can think of an objective or any objectives that would be useful here. You want to be sure that these are real photographs opposed to drawings or something else. And that's, that's pretty sophisticated. So then we have to, for that outcome, we have to figure out how are we going to know that we're actually doing that? And what standard are we going to hold ourselves? So what is acceptable? If we correctly uh, separate real photographs drawings with 90% accuracy, is that sufficient? Do we need 100% accuracy? We're going to have to decide this at some point, and that's called creating a metric. So this is an objective. We want to be sure that these are real photographs as opposed to drawing. But then to actually do the math of it, to actually give our algorithm something to work towards, we need to map that objective to a metric that measures it in a way where we're not involved. We just turn that over to the viewer. So a metric that someone could use would be, I have, have 500 pictures of cat, and I want this algorithm when done to, and, and some of these pictures are drawings, some of them are pictures, are, are photographs. And I want this algorithm to get 90% accuracy in distinguishing drawings versus photographs. So this would be a metric that I use, and then I can I can measure my performance on this metric. And the key thing here that, that kind of our first insight that I want to discuss is mapping objectives to metrics. So I have my objective, and then I have my metric that tells me a numerical quantitative way of assessing how well I'm filling that particular objective. Actually, the I guess the metric here would actually be accuracy, like what portion of drawings are correctly identified divided by the total number of 500 drawings. And then this 90% accuracy would be standard or a goal that I have for this metric. This part that we're doing right now is incredibly important, doing this high-level thinking. There's also the sense that I want to capture that it's cat, right? So I could also have photographs of cats versus photographs of other things, squirrels or dogs, and I could have a second objective. I want to be sure we're right when we say it's a cat versus when we say it's not. That's a second objective. It would have its own metric of some way that we determine we're getting the, the cat part of it right. But from a practical perspective, there are other metrics that we need to look at and other objectives that we need to look at. And we have to consider trade-offs. This is no free lunch. So for instance, if you're an app designer, 
Which is better, an app that recognizes cats with 95% accuracy in one second, typically, or an app that recognizes cat with 99% accuracy, but takes about 15 minutes. Business perspective, this trade-off of accuracy versus speed is probably going to be worth it. And so we also have an objective of our user experience if we're designing an app. And that's something that the, the pure mathematics of things might not account for and probably won't account for. But this is a practical implementation detail for this app. People want their um, cat pictures quickly and if you can they might be willing to take a picture of a squirrel every now and then where they just swipe it away as long as that those images keep coming in at a, a more reasonable pace. Another concern that you have in terms of user experience that's not something a mathematician might typically think about is you have the like the potential for harm. So People who want to see pictures of cats typically don't want to see pictures of cats being harmed. If you're, or they wouldn't want to see a, a pornographic picture by accident when they're expecting to see cute pictures of cats. It may be worth it to have an app. So this is something, again, where you have to make these trade-off decisions. If your algorithm is fast and accurate, but every once in a while, it lets through a, a, a very vile meme about a particular cat doing something. Is that better or worse from your business perspective than an algorithm that is slightly less fast and slightly less accurate but catches offensive material 100% of the time? So all of these things are trade-offs that you have to make. These are objectives for the product that you have to think about. And often these will be in competition and you have to sort of think about creating a way of ranking the importance, quantifying the importance, what is most important.